In this video, we'll show you how to add notes and annotations to a Scalar book. We'll learn how to associate notes with text or as an inline note appearing in its own callout block. We'll also demonstrate how to use Scalar's annotation editor to create interactive annotations of images and videos and incorporate them into the text of a book. Um, when you're editing a page, you might have noticed actually that so the first two buttons are the ones you've worked with so far for importing media, both as a link and then plunked in the, the page. Then the next two buttons here are for scalar notes. Okay, scalar notes, which can be in the same way with media, they can be tied to text as a link, or they can be placed on a page where you want them to be. Okay. And so I've got an example of a page um, that has two different versions of notes, scalar notes. And uh, I can show you sort of like use cases quickly before we get to the annotation money. Please load. Okay. All right. So on this page, I have first a note that is linked to text. And so you can see here right before the link, there's a little teeny tiny sticky icon. And this is sometimes used um, for the class projects I've worked with as a place to put a citation. So if you want to have running notes, this is a good place to put a citation or a discursive footnote, um, but it will be linked to text. And so when I click on the link, it brings up the content of the link. And you can see this is a note that is linked to text. So it has a title and then it has content. And then I can go to this page because this is now a page of its own. And so it's a complete page, okay? If I go back to the page, this is an example of a note, a scalar note that is not linked to text. So I think of it more as like a call out space. If there's a, a point you want to make, you can really draw attention to it with this, this tool. Um, and you can put as much appearing in this space as you want to, um, or you can force somebody to go to the note page and see what's here. And these notes can either be pages that you have already created and you're adding here as a note, or you can create them um, as we say on the fly in Scalar. So if I highlight some text here and I wanna create a note, you'll see it brings up the menu of all of the content that we have here, but it also says create page on the fly. And now it's going to ask me, what's the title? Do I want to show the title? Yes, I do. Do I want to show the description? No. Do I want to show the content? Yes. So as always, save and view. And now there's my little sticky note. When I hover, I get the link. All I get here is what I told it to display. So you have choices there. Okay. So, so that is the note tool and you can use it in different ways, um, whether you want people to go directly to information or you want to call something out um, and kind of make it plainly visible here. All right. Any questions about that before I get to annotations? No. Okay. Okay, so annotations. This is where Scalar really offers some unique functionality. And there, it's going to let you do something really cool, even though you don't know how to do programming. Um, and so that's what I love about this. Um, so I'm going to go to the media menu. And I am going to select an item to annotate. 
So Katie, you already you used the gargoyle for something else, but actually, actually, I will do that. I will use the gargoyle again. Where did he go? Gargoyle. All right. So because I do want to edit the gargoyle, I am going to click on the link to take me directly to the media page. So here I am, the full full screen image of the media. And if I click on the paperclip, this is where you have to just get used to how Scalar talks about things. This is the annotation tool under the paperclip. Oh, and I already did one little annotation here. So you'll see as I hover over the image, I have this click and drag to annotate. And so literally, I put my cursor on the image and I drag it to highlight an area. And now I get the chance to say something about this. And basically just give it a title to the annotation and then I will save it. All right. So here's the title of my annotation. And now I can say something about it, which I don't have anything really awesome to say. So I'll copy and paste from my this room. So this is where I'm focusing the reader's attention on some aspect of the image. And I can have one annotation on an image or many annotations on the image, as many as I want or need. Okay. And I, I add them just by doing that drag and drop on the image itself. And then I can edit. I can change the title. I can add content. So I say, this is, I'm drawing your attention to this thing here on the image. Pay attention here. And again, Katie mentioned this earlier. Um, adding a description is very helpful for you on the back end. You don't have to display the description on the front end. But when you start creating your book, you're going to have many pages and you'll want to be able to distinguish them in some way. And everything is searchable. So, and I'm going to save that. And I'll say that I am done with that. And so now I'm looking at the full size media object. And when I hover over it, the box becomes highlighted. And then the content of my note appears when I hover over with the cursor. Okay. And so you'll notice these other, these mathy things here, these mathematical <laughs> frightening things, X and Y axis. Um, say you, you didn't like the placement of the box. Um, you feel like you, you didn't drag very well. You can nudge your box using your mouse to scroll, or you can use the plus or minus keys to kind of move it around. So depending on how good your first drag was, uh, you can adjust as you need to. Okay. Um, Megan, maybe you're going to cover this, but can you show us how to delete an annotation? Oh, you mean from here or in? Hmm. Yeah. So if you just if its head is highlighted there and you do the minus at the bottom. Yeah, yeah. So if I say the signature, I no longer need that annotation. I can I can use the minus to delete it. Yep. Thanks, Katie. And any annotation that I, I could have 50 annotations, but I never have to show any of them if I don't want to. You can control when they appear and we will get to that. Um, actually, let's do that now. Why don't we do that now? Um, so I'm going to go to save that, make sure that's done. done. So I'm going to go to a page. And so now I want to bring in this image annotation. So I'm going to do an inline. I have to click my edit button first. Get my text highlighted. I'm going to choose my media. 
I'm going to choose the gargoyle. And now when I'm bringing in this piece of media, it knows that there are annotations available here. Okay. And so I can choose which annotation or annotations I want to have appear on the page. And I'm going to go ahead and say both of them. And since there's more than one, it's going to ask me, do you want to feature one over another? So it will be highlighted differently on the page. So I'm going to make it bigger just so we can see it. And I'm not going to put the description on. I'm just going to say like the title is all I want to see there. And I will continue. Save and view. OK, so now that is highlighted. That is a featured annotation. Okay. So when I click on that link in the text, it goes straight to the image and it goes to the featured annotation first. If I click on the other one or highlight the other one, it takes me to that annotation. That's cool, right? I mean, that's fun. Yeah. So the other thing that we're going to do is we're going to annotate uh, a video. So you can annotate audio and video as well as images. It's just amazing. So one of the videos we have in here is a hilarious um, early stop motion photography uh, video that Katie found. And the key to doing this without driving yourself insane is to preview the entire file first and then decide where do I want my annotation to start and end, right? So if you're gonna be highlighting a portion of a larger sound or video file, you wanna, you wanna have your clip sort of predetermined. So you'll wanna take notes yourself on, you know, what's the start time and what's the stop time. So I have a couple of notes made. So I'm going to go back to the paperclip annotation tool. And so here is the annotation editor. And there's a play button, a playhead for it, and then that add and subtract. So I, I do want to add an annotation. And so now that I've clicked add, it's giving me a place to where I can name the annotation. Um, blue. And then I'm gonna want to play the video to the place where I want it to start for the viewer, okay? And I'm gonna drag it to about 30 seconds. And I'm gonna set that. Or I thought I was going to set that. And this is partly, it's magical, but vexing at the same time, I'll just say. So I am going to set my annotation to start at that point. Okay. So YouTube is only giving me like two, two positions on the time, right? And Scalar has got like way more decimal points here. So you have the opportunity to do finer tuning of the start and stop after you sort of get your ballpark together, okay? And so I'm going to drag it to an end point. It's like set, okay. All right, so I'm going to save that. And now if I click on my annotation to preview it, it's going to take a long time to play. Wow. OK, I'm just going to add another one. You should watch this later. It's really funny. So in this part of the annotation, the food on the table starts going crazy. At the end, okay. Yeah. 
Okay, so now that I've done, I'm back to the media page. And if I click it, click on annotations, it will show me the two annotations that I have created for this. And it should play the annotation where I started and where I'm stopping it. So it'll play for that amount of time. Okay. Fun. All right. I'll stop it. So now I'm going to go back to a page and I'm going to bring this annotation into the page. And actually, this is a good thing to note now. I'm back at my content menu and my two annotations that I just created, first clue and crazy table, are among the pages of the book. So this is where Scalar creates a page for everything. Um, let's go to another page and edit the page. And I'm going to, this is really fun, so I want to have the video play in a large spot. So I'm selecting my media. I want it to be medium, center, title. And I'm going to say, yes, I want both annotations, um, but none of them are featured. So now I'm on the page, there are annotations, and I can play them. And I could have added text to the annotations as well as marking the start and stop time of the clip. 